Hi there, welcome to Elm Colors, I'm Erica. On today's video, we are going to be continuing in our How I Color Alphabet series. And today is V is for vegetables. Uh, I have several um, pages to show you of different examples in some, a few different kinds of books. And then I have a couple, just a couple of um, examples to show you in books that I've colored. So I'm going to start with this cute page. This is from A Million Cute Animals by Lulu Mayo. And I found this page with so many different vegetables on it. This is one I'm definitely looking at to color because I love these little hamster guys. Of course, the vegetables are great too, but really it's just about the, the little hamster guys. So that is that one. And then I found a couple in my Colorful World books. So this one is the... Um, this is the title here, and I believe that this is like through the year, and I found this cool one, which I'm not exactly sure what these guys are back there. At first, I thought they were carrots, but carrots don't typically have quite that many leaves, so then I thought maybe they were like, I don't know, some some kind of root vegetable. <laughs> I know that much, but other than that, that's all I got. But then you've got lettuce and the pea pods, and I'm thinking these are a gourd of some sort. That's the only problem. I am not a gardener, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I eat a lot of vegetables, but they also have the labels on them, so <laughs> I don't have to think about too much what they are. That sounds kind of silly, but when I look at, sometimes when I look at vegetables, like drawings of vegetables, I don't know what all of them are. Maybe these are like parsnips or turnips or something like that. Neither of which I eat, so that's a possibility. Anyway, so that's that page in this book. <laughs> then I found another one in another Colorful World book. This is that one, and this is all about nature. And there's this cool mandala with all kinds of different veggies. I think I can name most of these. So I was happy about that. <laughs> it was just that other page that was throwing me off a little bit. Um, but I really like the way that this is laid out. Uh, this would be a cute one to show you how you could quick and easy do it with maybe some markers. Since this is single-sided, you could definitely use um, alcohol markers, and that would be a super fast page if you use those. So, so yep, yeah, there's that one. Uh, then I found a couple, of course, in the Teresa Goodrich books. I have this one. This one is Country Kitchen Charm, and I found this really super cute page. I really like this page a lot. Um, I just love the, I love the old fashioned stove. I love the stripy wallpaper. I love the rooster clock. It's just cute. And then of course you've got all your veggies right here. So I thought that one would be a cute one to color as well. There's a lot of cute ones in here and I really want to color all of them, but I know that I can't. So we will be limiting. Oh, I just saw this cute little creamer, this little cow creamer. <laughs> Look how cute it is. Oh, I need that in my life. Sorry. Uh, sidetracked. Okay, so there's that page in Country Kitchen Charm. And then in Summer Scenes, we've got this one. Now this has fruit and veggies, but it's a nice big close-up shot of some of these veggies here. And uh, I like that these are the, the focal point of the page. So that was another option. I did find um, a couple in some Maria Trolley books. You'll just have to kind of check and see. I know Luna has this double page spread where there's some pea pods here and then the tomato plant here with the two little girls harvesting the tomatoes, which I thought was really super sweet. And then in Twilight Garden, there is also this one here. So this one has a lot of different vegetables. And then on this page, you've got like some lettuces and some like wild onion things and flowers and all kinds of stuff I, all around the bunnies, which I thought that one was pretty cute too. It's not as many vegetables, but um, that one would be a good one for the, for the veggies. Um, then we've got some in the Romantic Country books. So in Romantic Country, The Third Tale, we have this one, which I have actually started in another How I Color video. I think this was How I Color Glass. Um, I showed how I colored that glass jar, uh, but I think that this one would be a really good one to color to finish up. Um, shouldn't take too long either. And I think, nope, it's not this book. So, yep, there's that one in here. 
Then in, oh wait, is it the very next page? Well, shoot, I think it's this one. We'll have to see. Um, and then in the uh, Romantic Country, the first one, you've got this picture here where of course you've got some lovely veggies hanging on the wall. And then this one here, which is another vegetable garden with some little bunnies, which I thought that one was pretty cute too. I like this page a lot. And then we've got in, um, yeah, in this Rita Berman book, this is the um, All the Seasons compilation book. I do have this page that I started a while ago and I still haven't gone back to finish it. Um, yeah, just lots of different vegetables, of a few fruits thrown in there as well, um, some herbs. Yeah. And a couple of insects but I, I like this page a lot and I think it would be a cute one to to finish up I was using I think Arteza pencils on this page um, but yeah so that is that page and then the other one that I have finished oh let me show you this other yeah well I'll show you this one first so this is the one that I have finished this is of course a lovely little garden with all the veggies um, I did that one using pencil, so it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to take, but I do like the result in the end. And then the other one I found, this is not another one that I finished. This is just an example that I found is this awesome two page layout, which we will not be doing today, <laughs> but I thought it was really cool. And I mean, there's everything in here. So there's veggies, fruits, breads, meats, cheeses, <sighs> grains, like everything. I love this page. It would be so fun to color. It would just take forever, forever. But so yeah, so there is that. So those are all of my um, examples that I have to show you today for vegetables. Uh, I'm going to pick out a couple to do and get myself situated and then we will get started. Okay, so I have a couple of inspiration pages here. Um, well, reference pages mostly. So these are some images I found online that will help me out with some of my color choices. And besides just getting ones that look, that are realistic, I also printed out a couple that are um, clip art, just because, you know, if I wanna do something a little more simply, color something a little more simply, then I think that, you know, just having those solid blocks of color will really help um, me with my color choices. So uh, I'm gonna set these off to the side. I will put some pictures on the screen if, if I need to reference them at any point. But I have started this one. So I thought we could focus on these little mushroom, or the vegetables down here. I think I'm gonna zoom you guys in. Okay, so now my plan from here is to pick out a few veggies that, it's on, that are on this page. And I am going to use this reference sheet and pick out a few of my alcohol markers that will go with it. So let's start. Um, let's start with the broccoli. Because I think that I could probably just do alcohol markers with the broccoli. So, so far on this page, I have done um, an alcohol marker base and then gone over top with some personal colors. And that's going to be my plan. So you can see all the alcohol markers on the backside. That's going to be my plan. Um... For this page so I've got we're gonna do broccoli so we've got all of these greens so this is my ohuhu um, set and I think I want a couple of different greens so I kind of like I kind of like this GY 42 I like this GY 3 this G7 and the G2 I think those are the ones that I'm gonna go with okay so I'm gonna start with my lighter color first and I'm just probably I'm just gonna go over all of this um, the whole thing with this marker so I'm just gonna color straight color so this is the GY3 and I'm just gonna do a quick pretty solid coverage It does look a little iffy right now, but I think once we add these other colors in, it will be good. Okay, so my next one I'm gonna use is G, 
two, and I'm going to go ahead and use um, the bullet tip nib instead of my brush tip. And I'm just gonna start pouncing in some color where I think that I want it. And you'll be able to see, hopefully, that since the bottom layer is still wet, that these this automatically kind of blends in together. So you don't have to go back in and do too much blending. And she does have a little bit of texture lines drawn in so you can kind of see where like the highlights would be. So for on this piece here, this whole center section I think would be a highlight and then everything else around it is gonna kind of be darker. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add these, the darker color around the outside edge and, and then a little bit down onto the stalks as well. Stems, stems probably, right? And then the same over here, I'm just gonna get do some dotty dots. And then if I do think something needs to be blended a little bit more, so like on this part, I think maybe she needs, or it, she, broccoli's not. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> if I think it needs a little bit more blending, I can go back over with that color again. Okay, so let's go to this color. So this is G2. Is that the one I just used? Yeah, I think it might be actually. <laughs> So let's do let's do this GY42. So this is going to give I I'm, I'm going to use the brush tip on this one. This one's going to give a little bit of a a greener, nope, yeah, more yellowy green kind of color. And we don't want it to be perfectly uh, round. This almost looks like army. <laughs> Now I don't like I don't typically color vegetables. I've only colored a co you you saw the pages that I have colored and um it's mostly you know things that are already in the ground, basic vegetables that you would normally find. And I haven't really colored any broccoli before. But we're going to give it a go. Okay. So then now I'm going to come in with my darkest color and again, I'm going to use that with the bullet tip and I'm just going to use it pretty sparingly in the areas that are super dark. Okay. I'm going to go back over again now with my beginning color. So this is again, GY3 and I'm going to put in some dots with that color right into those highlighted areas. And then we're going to try to blend this little section out a little bit more. So it looks like there's a nice blend there. And there we go. I think that kind of looks broccoli-ish. So now since I've got darker colors on there, I can go back over with my Prismacolor in a lighter color. So for example, I think, uh, no, I'm going to try this color. So we're going to go with this lemon yellow. Um, I think that's pretty dry, but because the prismas go so well on top of the alcohol markers, I can come in and add a little bit more um, to the highlighted areas with a little bit more texture with my pencil. And I'm just doing just tiny little dots. I don't really know if it's really doing anything, but it I think it, you know, it definitely adds a little bit of a highlight, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, the broccoli is supposed to look pretty, um, pretty textured. So I think it's a safe bet to add in those texture lines and yeah. So, and I'm also going to come in with some dark green. No, I don't think that's the right color. I think I'm going to need to use like a really dark, like a warm, like my 90 warm gray, maybe even. Let's try that. I just really want this, um, the separation between these two to super show. Mm, I don't know if that really did anything, but it's always good to try stuff out, right? I am going to add a little bit of the 70% warm gray just right underneath the tops of the broccoli stems. 
Okay, and I think that's our broccoli. I think I'm, I'm good with that. Okay, so next, let's color, let's do the corn. Um, so again, I'm gonna try to use my colors from my Ohuhu set. And then if I need to bring in any Copics, I can do that as well. So I'm gonna start out with Y3 because that looks like a good golden corn color. I'm also gonna use, I think, Y1 and Y6. So I've recently set up all of my alcohol markers on my desk and it's so nice to just have them there and I can just reach for them and be done. I love it. Uh, let's see what else. Maybe a little bit of this YR33. Okay, so we're gonna do the insides of the corn first. So I think, again, I'm just gonna start with my lightest color, which is Y3. And I'm going to just do a straight solid base on the entire corn. And since I have some corn over here, do the same thing. Okay, then I'm gonna take my Y1, which is my next darkest color, and I'm gonna pick a few kernels here and there to just make a little bit darker. And I'm not just gonna stick to one or two and I'm not staying in the lines. I'm just kind of pouncing that color wherever I feel like I want a little bit of a darker kernel. I might not even need to use all of these, we'll see. So this one is Y6 and I'm gonna stay in the darker areas I think on this one. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna pick a couple here and there. Okay, and then this YR33 is a lot darker, so I'm really just gonna stay inside the lines on some of these ones that I'm picking that I want to be really dark. And you wanna try to avoid like going in a pattern or anything. You want it to kind of be random, as random as you can make it. I like the corn that is all multicolored. I really, I probably should have left some of them even like white. I don't know if that's like sweet corn or what that is, but I love, I love that kind of corn. Okay, and I'm gonna go back over where I need some more color with my Y3 again. Yeah, I think that's good. Well, that was pretty easy. <laughs> I don't even think I need to add any uh, pencils to that. And then for the outside, I think we're gonna use a couple, probably the same, let's see. So like for this one, I'm really gonna re rely on these two um, clip art pieces because they have like a lighter green and like this corn is, doesn't have anything and the other reference pictures I have just have the corn and nothing outside of it. So it's a lot, it's little, really like a spring green kind of color. So I might do, I might grab this GY4. Um, yeah, let's try this GY5 and GY7. Let's see what those do. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use my GY7 since it's the lightest. So I'm just going to go ahead color that whole thing in and this makes the page go so much faster when you can use alcohol markers because you just put this base layer down you can add in some texture with your pencils if you want to you can add in all the shading with your alcohol markers if you want to um yeah it just really speeds the page up okay i really like that color that color green with the um that yellow that I've put on there. And I'm gonna color that in the background with this green too, I think. Yeah, so let's do that one. And then we'll come in with our GY4. Uh, and I'm just gonna come out from the center a little bit with this. Okay, so this one is gonna take a little bit of blending from me. So again, so I just used GY4. Now I'm gonna come out from that area with my GY seven and that you can see that just kind of makes that transition so much smoother from that darker color to the lighter color okay so i think we'll work on carrots next carrots are one that i have colored 
pretty often, but not necessarily this, this method. Okay. Uh, I don't love my orange selections on here, but I think we're going to go with Y4, Y10, and YR3. All right. So I'm going to start with the Y4 because that's my lightest. And I'm just going to color that whole thing in. I hope these are carrots and not like turnips. There are a bunch of root vegetables that I just don't know. <laughs> like I, I don't know. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take my caps off of my other two markers. I have the YR3 and the Y10. And I'm just going to add in some little texture lines from the side, just like she's got her lines drawn in there. I'm going to bring that in from my darker color first. I'm going to do the same thing with that other color. Yeah, and since that was all wet, it's still, it's just kind of blending in pretty good. Uh, this one might be one where I need my pencils a little bit more. So let's do that. I am going to go ahead, I think, and use that same, no, I don't, I want to make these a little darker. So I'm going to grab a different green. I think I'm going to do G2, which is this one. I'm just going to go ahead and add that G2 to my carrots. And then if I want to lighten that up, I'll just do that with um, pencils. Because I know this cauliflower in the background, I want that light, that green to be pretty light. So I wanted a little bit of contrast between the front and the back. Okay, so for... My carrots now, I am going to grab, we're gonna to try to use, let me look at my pencils, uh, swatch chart really quick. Okay, so I have terracotta and lemon yellow that I'm gonna to try to add shadow and highlights with. So let's do, I'm gonna do the shadows first. So I'm gonna get in here with this terracotta and color, especially between the two carrots. And then again over here, where the basket kind of overlaps that carrot. Okay, well that worked for sure. So now I just need to grab one more color. I have the pumpkin orange, which I know there's a pumpkin in here, so we probably should save it for that, but I'm gonna use it for this one. So I'm gonna use this pumpkin orange and we're gonna do the lines like I had tried to do with my markers and it just kind of blended in. And I'm just gonna bring that color in from the side. And it's pretty subtle because it's not too far off from the color that is already on the carrot. And I am turning my pencil pretty much constantly so that I have that nice sharp edge so that it, it blends in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my lemon yellow and I'm gonna draw highlights. So I'm gonna come across, I'm not gonna start at the edges, I'm gonna stay towards the center more but uh, do that same kind of thing where I twist my pencil and um, make sure I have a nice sharp point. There we go, there's some carrots for that. I think I'm gonna use the same lemon yellow, actually, to highlight the leaves a little bit. I really love to use these prismas on top of alcohol markers. It just is so fun. Okay, well that's that's good. Let's do, so there's another carrot there, so I'll have to make sure I keep my colors out. How about some potatoes? I know they're boring and brown, but let's see what we can do. <laughs> okay, so I kind of like this Y7, and then maybe like the Y8 and a BR1. Let's try that. Okay, so I've not used this combo before, so we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to start with the Y7, and I'm just going to color this whole thing. And I'm hoping these are potatoes, because they are now. <laughs> We're going to color all three potatoes with just a quick layer of this Y7. Okay, then I'm going to take, yeah, I think I'm just going to take the Y8. Uh... Let's do, hmm, that's almost potato color already, isn't it? So let's do, I'm going to do the BR1, and I'm going to 
get into the shadows with that. So that seems really dark. I'm just gonna kind of outline the where it overlaps with the basket. And then I'm gonna come in with the white eight, which is a little bit darker than our original color, and blend that out a little bit. Do a little bit of dotting. Okay. And then use my Y7 to blend that out even more. And I do do like a few little dots here and there. You don't want to push hard with the tip, but you can just dot the color in sometimes and it creates that nice textured um, appearance. I am going to use, I'm going to try to use some of this eggshell to kind of get a little bit of highlights in here. So I'm just going to draw just a few little spots on the potato just to give it a little bit of texture. And then probably end up using my warm gray. This is my 90% warm gray, just to make the shadows nice and dark in between here. And I don't like the way that that blended, so I'm gonna try again to go back through with my white eight. Yeah, and see if I can blend that out a little bit more. I'm using the bullet tip this time. I'm gonna do that here as well because I really didn't like the way that that blended out. Okay, so we'll see if that works. Uh, yeah, so then I'm just gonna continue to darken up those shadow areas. Really like this 90% warm gray, especially on things that have, you know, like a warmer tone. I really like to use this as a shadow color a lot. Okay, it's really close to black, but it's not quite black, so. All right, I think those look like potatoes. We're doing good, doing good, doing good. Let's do a couple of tomatoes. I've not colored, I don't know, I think those are garlic probably. So, or onion. Um, what do we think? Let's look at our reference sheets. <laughs> you know what, let's just make it, we're just gonna make it garlic. And if it looks like an onion too, then that's great. <laughs> okay, sorry, I gotta get all my markers in order. So we're going to do some tomatoes. So let's see what we got here. Um, I like, so for my tomatoes, I think I'm going to start with the base actually of an orange. So I'm going to start with this Y4 again, and then I'm going to come over top of that with the uh, Y5 and then the R2. So let's see if I can get those. So we're just going to color one of these because if I don't like this combination, <laughs> we're going to have to change it. But all right, so let's do let's do this one over here. And uh, she did draw in like a little highlight area for you there, so you know kind of where to avoid putting colors so that you can maintain that highlight. All right, I like that color. And then we're gonna go in with Y5. And I'm gonna blend that out a little bit with the Y4. And then to make it nice and red, I'm going to add in some of this R2. All right, I think I like that. So I'm just using Y4 again. You know, I've completely covered up my highlight, but I can go back in with my Posca and add that back in. And then for the tips, the um, leafy part at the top, Let's see, so that carrot one was nice. I really like this base color that I've used on here. So let's try that GY3. And I'm gonna use my bullet nib and just kind of go in with color and see how we do. All right, maybe use my little Prisma guy here. So this is the Olive Prisma add in a little bit of shading and then we'll use now I can't find my white Posca but I'm using an ivory and that's pretty darn close so we'll just add that little shine back in yeah I like that 
uh, we can do one a little bit more red. So let's start, first off, let's start with the red. So we're going to do this backwards. So we're going to do R2. I'm just going to leave that area up there towards the top for the lighter areas. And then I'm layering over that a little bit with the Y5. And now we're going to do Y4. And it's a pretty harsh. Hmm. I don't love that one as much. But let's try this again. So we're going to get these. I'm going to hold off on that one and try to get in there with a pencil. Uh, I'm going to use Prussian green and just try to do it with a pencil instead of trying to use the markers because that's really tiny little bitty spots. There we go. I like that. Okay. I think I want to make this a little bit darker, so I'm going to come in again with a pencil. And I'm going to use Tuscan Red, I think. Ooh, I need to sharpen this guy. Okay, and I'm going to add in a little bit of shading down here on the bottom. And then actually inside of some of these little leafy parts, too. Let's add my highlight back in. All right. Well, that looks all right. I'm going to color this part dark. I don't really know what that is. I don't know if that was supposed to be the inside of the bowl. Probably was. <laughs> Let's do the poppy red. Um, the other thing is, once you do your pencils, you can use pen or once you do your markers, you can use your pencils to go back over top of it, and you don't have to work as as hard to get your your stuff blended uh, because you've already got that base color in there. Okay, let's get this highlight in. All right, so there are our tomatoes moving right along. Let's do some garlic. Now, garlic is kind of tricky because it's all white, <laughs> but I think if I use a few of my maybe French grays and my white, I think that will look garlic-like. Um, so I think I'm going to do, let's do these two and see what happens. I'm not going to use my um, alcohol markers on these ones because the only really like white-ish color I have, like I have those two colors. They show up a lot darker on the paper than they do on my swatch. So I'm going to stick, I think, with my um, my pencils on this one. I'm going to start with my 30% French. Nope. 50? 50. My 50% French gray. And I'm just kind of outlining the, the, the lines that Miss Goodrich has put in for us. Uh, and then I'm going to do kind of go off of those ones a little bit with my lighter color. And especially like where the garlic kind of comes together right there. And then I'm going to use my white. Just go over the whole thing. I think that looks garlicky enough. Okay, and then mushrooms. And I am gonna go ahead and switch back to my um, markers for this one. I think I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use this WG01 um, for the caps. I think, let me test this out again. Boy, that's dark. Okay, I lied. <laughs> I'm going to use my, um, I'm actually going to use the same colors that I used on my garlic. I'm going to use this 30% French gray and my 50 first. So I'm going to start with the 50 
and just where the areas would be nice and dark. I'm going to put that in there. And then I'm going to use my 30% to shade out from that. Okay. Okay, those look good. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let me color in the rest of these little guys and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, there's our little mushrooms. I think that looks cute. We're gonna get all these vegetables done today. Um, all right, cauliflower. Now this one um, might be good. So I have this. Um, GY173 and it's kind of a yellowy color. So I'm thinking about doing a little bit of that and maybe a little bit of this 172 because these are both super duper light colors. So we might try that. So I'm going to use my bullet tip um, for this uh, and I'm just going to I'm just going to start dotting I think and then I might come in with my um, alcohol, my clear colorless blender guy, and um, try to blend this out. But like cauliflower is pretty white. Um, there's not a lot of color to it. So there's just a few like shadowy colors. And sometimes it's a little bit yellow, sometimes it's a little bit green. So we're just gonna Put a little bit of yellow, put a little bit of green, and hope that hope for the best. Okay, and then I'm gonna use my colorless blender and just kind of go right over the top of that whole guy, and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna let that work for a minute, and then we're gonna come in with I'm gonna use I think the same green color. So I've got this GY172, and then I have this GY3 that I'm gonna blend with it, I believe. Oh, maybe not, maybe not three, that's too dark. How about seven, do I have seven out already? Okay, yeah, so I've got GY72 and GY7. So I'm gonna start with my 72. This is really pale, like almost like a, like a pale sage kind of color from Prismas. I'm going to use this darker color just to give a little bit of shading here and there. I'm kind of blend that around a little bit with my other marker. Yeah, I think I'm going to use a little bit of this GY7 actually on the cauliflower as well. Sometimes along the edges of cauliflower you get that. That color that is more green. I need to stop working on this though because otherwise it's going to start <laughs> turning like the whole thing is going to turn that color. Okay, so let's try that again. Let's blend that out. See what happens with that and then I might add in, let's try a little bit of this GY4 in the shadow areas of this cauliflower and then blend it out even more with the 172. Okay, I think that guy's done. Okay, I did just go over the top of this with the white and it really, really lightened it up because I went a little dark with my shadows. Um, but it really, yeah, I just went over the center part with the white and I'm going to go along the edges of the leaves, the leafy part around the outside. I add a little bit of white there too. Okay. So now what we have to decide is, I think these are both pumpkins. What are these guys in here? I'm going to say, now they could be more pumpkins they kind of have that same shape but they could also be 
watermelon, but that wouldn't go <laughs> with my veggies. So let's figure out what those guys are. I do have, I, you know, I've seen like gourds and things like that. That could be, that could be a squash, maybe like a little round squash. That's a possibility. Yeah, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do the pumpkins and then I will decide what to do with those here in a second. Okay, so my pumpkins, we're going to start with a yellow base for sure. So I'm going to start with my Y1, nope, Y3, Y3. Then we're going to go to YR33. I might need a color in between those actually. Yeah, find all my markers. Okay, so there's YR33. Uh, I'll probably grab the Y1 too, just to make sure that I have a nice blending color in between those. And then uh, let's throw in some, let's do YR2. So I've got my four colors. We're going to start with my lightest color. And I'm going to just go ahead and put this Y3 all over the entire pumpkin. Ah, uh, shoot. Well, I guess they're all pumpkins now. <laughs> it's all right. Well, maybe I can make that a squash, like a yellowy squash or something. Gosh darn it. Okay, and then I'm going to add in my YR33. i see if I can blend that out with the Y... Oops, wrong side. I always do that because they're backwards from the Copics. Okay, and then we're going to come in with the um, YR2. Oh, that's just Y2. Hmm. It's not very orange, is it? Let me try to add in a little bit of pencil. So I've got this cadmium hue orange. I'm going to try to add a little bit of that and see if that kind of helps change that tone a little bit more. That looks a little bit better. Uh, and the nice thing about pumpkins is they are pretty textured. They have a lot of texture on them, so you can add in some spots here and there to kind of make your blending go a little smoother. Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep this base, and I'm going to just use this cadmium orange to add in my color. I'm going to focus on where the thicker lines are in this pumpkin so that I can get like a nice shadow in there so it looks like that that part is kind of overlapping the next part yeah and then we're gonna go with let's do this one so I've got Spanish orange I'm just gonna blend that guy out as best I can all right I like that maybe if we add in a little bit of terracotta color just a little bit from the, the center like really lightly just some light lines just to give the pumpkin a little bit of texture I'm going to go right back over those with that Spanish orange color and then one more time with the cadmium orange we're going to do the flicking from the center yeah I like that one much better let's do some flicks over here <laughs> See if we can darken up the see and that's the thing that you just have to do you just have to play and and see what works and what doesn't and there we go so we have a really dark pumpkin and a really light pumpkin but perfect carrots <laughs> okay and then the stems on these guys are gonna be they're like a typically like a lighty light brown color 
Okay, so we got a couple pumpkins. Boy, that one's real dark. <laughs> I think super dark. Let me see if some of this eggshell, if I, if I do some stripies with this eggshell, maybe that'll lighten some of that up. If not, then it's just gonna be a, a really dark pumpkin. Okay, all right, so let me, I'm gonna add in some um, shadow. colors here. Okay, and then I am going to go and darken that back up with my gray. Okay. All right. So there are our pumpkins. Okay, so we've got uh, everything done except for these little squashes, which is what I've decided that they are. And I have done a base of the Y3, I believe. So now I'm just going to add in a couple of oranges from the um, oranges that I pulled already. Um, so I'm going to try to not make it look like the pumpkin, but um, maybe I should do a more of a brown. Let's grab this sienna brown, a little bit of this Spanish orange, and maybe let's do this, some uh, goldenrod. So I'm going to start with, let's start with the goldenrod and see what that does. So I'm just gonna follow the lines of the um, squash. I'm deciding that this is a yellow squash. <laughs> that is what I decided because it doesn't really, there's no really telling marks as to what it is. So you can just make it what you want, right? It's my coloring page, I can do what I want. <laughs> All right, so just real quick adding in some shadow on that. And then let's get, I'm gonna use Jasmine to blend that out a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna use my Spanish orange and I'm just gonna draw a couple of lines on the squash. I'm going to use my sienna brown and I'm going to do little um, texture dots. So I know sometimes on squash they have these little, it's, like, it's almost like freckles that they have. So I'm just going to add some of those. Uh, and I'm going to go back through again with that jasmine color and blend those out just a tiny bit. Especially where I went a little too hard on that one. And there's our squash. And you guys, we are done with all the veggies. I love it. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to finish this page for the end of the video. But there is a whole heap, a whole bushel <laughs> of veggies <laughs> for you guys. So I think I'm going to do one more page. Uh, and then, because um, this video is getting a little long, but I, maybe we'll do like a speed color for you. Um, and then we'll be done and then I'll show you everything at the end. So I will talk to you again here in a second.
here is my finished page. I ended up going ahead and doing the background and then I added some stickles. I'm not sure how much of that you guys will be able to see. I just wanted to give it a little bit of sparkle on the vegetables. I just thought that added a fun little touch. So we did this one today and I did not get this other one completely finished, but I'm going to show you again the um, basket of veggies. I'm going to hold it up so you can kind of see it pretty good. I really like the way that those turned out. I think that it looks awesome. Uh, and it was quick. I mean, it doesn't seem really quick because it did take, but it was a lot quicker than if I had tried to use colored pencils for the whole thing. So, so that is it for today, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that um, you learned a little bit about how to color vegetables. Uh, again, my biggest point of advice for any of these uh, How I Colors is to use reference. That's, that's my, that's my go-to and, uh, it doesn't usually steer me wrong. So, okay. So that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.